Joseph Hoff was a 66-year-old man. He was originally from Germany, and his family moved to the United States when he was three years old. Joseph grew up in Chicago and then settled in Omaha, Nebraska, where he ran a family business, furniture restoration and repair. He loved the Midwest and never really wanted to leave. One afternoon, Joseph was repairing an old cupboard with his son, when his heart started pounding in his chest. He felt out of breath and sat down on the cement floor, and before he knew it, he was lying down on the floor. His son ran over and didn't waste any time as he called for emergency services. About 15 minutes later, Joseph and his son were being taken into the emergency department. The emergency room team was notified that he was arriving, and a team of folks worked in unison to get him treated. Among other things, they set up monitors, placed IV lines, obtained lab work, and performed an ECG. A few minutes later, Dr. Daria Baldwin, the cardiologist, came down to see him. She was handed the ECG. She looked at the tracing and shouted, He has ongoing VTAC. Let's give him amiodarone. Within a few hours, Joseph was stable. He was sent up to the medical floor for observation. Dr. Baldwin swung by to pay him a visit, and explained that she had reviewed his medical chart, and that she wanted him to continue taking amiodarone. She said, All right, Joseph, we'll place you on the loading dose of 1,200 milligrams of amiodarone. Is that clear? Joseph nodded. She also told him to make a follow-up appointment with her next week in order to check his condition and reduce the amiodarone dose. One week later, Joseph arrived for his appointment. Dr. Baldwin asked Joseph if he experienced any exhaustion, fluttering in his chest, or shortness of breath lately, but Joseph said no. His ECG now showed normal electrical activity. As she was finishing up the appointment, Dr. Baldwin got paged about another patient who was being combative and insisting on seeing the doctor in charge. She apologized and headed off to deal with the situation, and asked Joseph to continue the amiodarone and to see her again in three weeks. Three weeks later... Joseph was on an unexpected road trip with his son. He called Dr. Baldwin to let her know that he's doing great and feeling well, but he needed to cancel his office visit. She asked him to continue taking his medication and asked him to check back with her in a year. As she spoke to him on the phone, she mistook Mr. Hoff for Mr. Hoffman, another patient of hers who was on a low dose of long-standing amiodarone. She noted the phone call in the wrong chart. Many months later, while Joseph was watching his son work in the workshop, he started to cough. The cough worsened over a few weeks, and he went into his general physician who asked him to get a chest x-ray. The chest x-ray showed evidence of interstitial pneumonitis, likely due to amiodarone toxicity. Joseph sought out another cardiologist, who was surprised that he had been taking such high levels of amiodarone for so long. Within a month, Dr. Baldwin received a letter stating that her hospital was being sued and that she was being named specifically because she was responsible for the ongoing amiodarone therapy of Joseph Hoff. Now, to rewind this back, let's imagine that Dr. Baldwin had been more careful to explain the importance of tapering the medication to Joseph during his first appointment. If that had happened, he would have been vigilant about not taking high doses for so long. In addition, let's say that Dr. Baldwin had been more careful when she received the phone call about the canceled clinic appointment. She would have had a chance to reschedule Joseph at a more appropriate time and would have likely reduced his amiodarone dose when she saw him again. Ultimately, without being on such a high dose, Joseph would probably not have developed severe amiodarone toxicity. The moral? Review patients' medications with them carefully and make sure that individuals on chronic medications are carefully monitored and educated. <laughs>